Welcome back, everybody. Tom and Charlie Cassidy here. We're talking about the uh, the evidence based wisdom series. We have three models of wisdom that we're going to be talking about now, and it sounds a little bit detailed. This to be talking about models of wisdom. Um, what depth are we going to get into in this overview? Well, um, we were saying in one of the earlier uh, screencasts that. Um, there's many, many definitions of wisdom have, yeah. have emerged in this sort of yeah. last sort of 30 or 40 years. Um, but I just want in this just to pass it down to sort of three leaders of the pack. These are the ones that have um, sort of risen to the top and they've mm -hmm. been adopted by other researchers. Uh, right. So because quite often you get people who come up with their own model and, and they use that over and over in their research. But these models are, are all ones that um, have been developed by one team and then have kind of spread throughout the community. And um, those are the three that we're going to be looking at today. So these are the received wisdom That's models. Right. Yeah. Yes, Thanks. absolutely. See why I did that? Nice. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> okay, so what's the first one? So the first one is is kind of the daddy, really. It's called the, the Berlin Wisdom Paradigm, uh, developed in the 1980s uh, in Berlin. <laughs> um, Clever. By um, Paul Baltert, who's a bit of a... Um, bit of a Always. leviathan in this kind of oh, field uh, and ursula staudinger who's um she's still going strong um at the max planck institute for human development so okay um they very much looked at wisdom mm -hmm. as an expertise so they said being wise basically means being an expert at life which is you know quite yeah. practical common okay. sense way of looking at it um so they had uh, that kind of five criteria uh, against which you would uh, judge uh, a decision or an action to mm -hmm. determine whether it was um, it, it was wise. Um, factual knowledge, procedural knowledge, lifespan, contextualism, relativism, and uncertainty. Again, lots of detail on evidencebasedwisdom.com. So there's a lot to take in there. Um, but it it was um, a very useful uh, framework. It's still used a lot to this day. Um, uh, but there is one. Uh, problem that a lot of other researchers had with it which is wisdom seems to be something when we talk about wisdom we feel that there's a certain amount of doing the right thing it, it's kind of an ethical component to mm. it it doesn't feel like it's wisdom unless it's for the common good etc and this uh, berlin wisdom paradigm is doesn't is, so much incorporate that no or? it's a, it's it's viewed as a little bit cold it's yeah. about a practical skill set you've got it or you haven't um, okay yeah so okay so there was a bit of a vacuum a bit of a space or a need for something that could uh bring the kind of ethical component back mm -hmm. into wisdom so that's the sort of strengths and and okay uh, okay that's the issues first one. with the burden wisdom paradigm sounds good and uh the the others that we're going to talk about in this one the next one is yeah so there's a guy called um uh robert sternberg uh who i think you'd really like he's um, quite well known in, in lots of different fields, education. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and he's actually come up with all sorts of theories. He kept, he's come up with a theory for intelligence, yep. a theory for wisdom, obviously, which we're talking about mm -hmm. now. Also a theory for love, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know too much about that, but he, you know, he's, <laughs> he strides various different yeah. fields. He was um, the, uh, he was the head of the American Association of Psychology. So he's a, he's a big deal. Yeah. And his theory of wisdom, um, Basically, it's called the balance theory of wisdom. And he says it's all about balancing various different drives, specifically towards um, trying to optimize it for the common good. Okay. So he, he very much um, said we need this, we need this common good, this ethical mm. component in uh, in our definition of wisdom. So that was kind of his contribution. So otherwise it's not wisdom, it might be good, but it's not wise, is well, that what he's it, saying? It's he, I think if you're just uh, using your vast, rich understanding of how life works to um, advance yourself, yeah, great. Most people would say it's not yeah. wisdom. Scheming, right. intellect, you know, yeah. well done, right. you know, Machiavellian, but not wisdom. So securing advantage for more than just yourself is a an element of this that theory. Model. Okay, that one, yeah. great. And the next one. So uh, this is the uh, most recent developed of the three it's called the three-dimensional wisdom scale developed by um, a researcher called Monica Ardelt uh, at the University of Florida and she sort of took a very different approach but she was very much coming from the perspective that it's about characteristics uh, rather than skills so she said um, that there are three personality characteristics that 
intertwine to um, lead to wise behavior. And those are um, having a reflective element to your character, having a, a cognitive element to your character. So you have to you have, you have to, to be smart. Quite, you have to yeah. be smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the third element is compassionate. You know, if you're smart but you're not compassionate, again, it's it's the it's scheming not evil genius. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so the three kind of work quite well together. And yeah. again, you can sort of you can see a talk on evidencebasedwisdom.com where she talks about how one sort of triggers the other, which mm. triggers the other, and they kind of fold back in on themselves. But so she approached it very much from a personality. A characteristics perspective um, and yeah reflective cognitive and compassionate dimensions so it's quite a different approach to the Berlin wisdom paradigm so it seems like you know going from the 1980s up into the late 90s has been a bit of a journey from mm. looking at wisdom as very much a cold hard skill transactional type yeah thing, transactional yeah. to uh, mm. being something that you know has elements of compassion doing the right thing in it interesting because then when you bring in the morality of things how it'll be interesting to see how the cultural ideas of what is absolutely for the greater good mm. and how that impacts upon um on, on wisdom and in its implementations yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and what's what's obviously very exciting about having uh, established frameworks is that you can then start to measure against those frameworks so once you've got um some yeah criteria some scales then you can sc agree yeah. yeah and that's when we can start to do some science on it yeah yeah which is awesome Thanks. Love it. Okay. Thanks for that. And see you in the next one.